Hello and welcome to Anchor. If you haven't heard about Anchor, it's the easiest way to make a podcast. And let me explain to you why. There's a creation tool that's located within the Anchor app, which will allow you to record and edit your podcast right from your phone or your computer. And then Anchor will distribute your podcast for you. That's also one of the perks of using Anchor. And then your podcast could be heard on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and many more. You can make money from the podcast with no minimum listenership. It's everything you need in one place, which is in the Anchor app. So if you want to get started, and again, it's totally free, then download the free Anchor app or go to anchor.fm to get started today. Hello and welcome to Life As It Is with me, Dora Middleton. In this segment, I would like to talk about mega churches. And the reason why I would like to touch on that subject is because of everything that's going on in the world today. And to give you a little bit about um, religion and myself, I grew up in church. Um, my whole family basically attended the same church. So we had a pretty big church and we took up both sides of the church and half of the middle of the church, just my family, cousins, uncles, aunts, nieces, nephews, you name it, children. We took up most of the church and we were, we were in there. Okay. Every Sunday faithfully. And then most of us was in there in midday services as well. Okay. So I guess my question is, when it comes to mega churches, do they really know their their members? How how much do they know about the members? Because the churches I have attended, the church that I grew up in, you could call your minister if you needed prayer or if you needed help, and he was right there. You can't do that with mega churches, and I've I've heard people talk about how. It's you can't even reach your minister, basically. And it's like you're attending this big church and you're just you're just there with thousands of other people. And your your minister knows nothing about you. He, he doesn't know anything about your family. And it's like with the mega churches, they don't try to know anything about about you or your family, or your situations. You can't call on your family. I mean, on your make on that mega church if your family's sick. Because how are you going to reach them? You know, I'm used to the close relationship that with the minister that I had growing up and even as an adult all the way until he passed away. And that's what made me start looking for a new church home, because when I moved back to my hometown, I found out he was actually he had passed away and I was you know, I decided I was going to go to a different church. So I started to search around. But even if I go a little bit back, go further back than this, when I actually left my hometown and was in, because I've lived in two different places. I've lived down south and I've lived west. Okay. And down south, when I was looking for a church home, I was calling around because I wanted to be a visitor one Sunday. And I can remember asking the the lady that answered the phone some questions and I asked her, okay, on Sunday, would it be hard finding a place to sit? What time would church start? What would I have to do when I come in there? You know, cause I don't want to be in the wrong place and try to sit somewhere I'm not supposed to sit. She said, oh, that wouldn't be a problem because in this church, you are seated according to what you donate, how much you put into the church. And can you, I, I couldn't believe what I heard. I'm, I was like, I had never heard of anything like that, that you pay, you sit according to where you, how much you pay. I had never heard of that. Okay. So I knew right then that wasn't the church for me. And then when I was living out West, I was told, okay, well, there's a little fee to attend this church. And I'm like, what, what kind of fee there? God can't be in a church where you have to pay to get in, you know? And I'm like, oh, wow. Okay. So then I also attended another church where when you walked in, this was out west, you met the minister's Rose Royce shining in the sun. Then you come through the church 
And the minister literally had the biggest diamonds on all 10 fingers that I had ever seen. And I sat there and I listened to the sermon, but everything was about money, 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 money. And I, I know I gave money about five times that day. That plate just kept coming around, coming around. And I'm like, oh, okay. So um, this church is also about money. Okay. Because that the whole conversation was strictly about money. So that goes back to what I was saying when my question is, how many people are actually... How many people feel comfortable with the mega churches? That's the question I have. Are we really comfortable with these men, these new age ministers here? Because it just seems like it's, there's no personal relationships with the members. Unless probably, unless you have a lot of money to donate. Then you might have that one-on-one. But if it's just like everyday people, it just seems as if you won't get to talk to that minister if he's needed for some reason or another in in your life. Okay. And that's what I'm not comfortable with. You know, there might be times where you want counseling with your minister for some reason or another, but with these maker churches, it's, I don't think you're going to get that, you know, and that is just what just keeps me thinking. Like I can never be a part of a church like that. Because I was not brought up to be a part of anything like that. I like the closeness of the members and the the minister. And you don't get that in the mega churches. But anyway, that's that's some of the things I wanted to talk about. Okay, so I will be taking a quick break and I will be right back. Hello and welcome back to Life As It Is with me, Dora Middleton. And in today's segment, I've been talking about mega churches and how I feel about mega churches or big churches in general. Okay, um, I would like to also touch base on the fact that, you know, with these mega churches, I believe that they've made, and I'm not going to just say I believe that they've done this, but from what I've talked to other people about, when I've had conversations with other people about church, they've begun to shy away from going to church because of the fact of how these mega churches are handled. You see these big ministers and they, when was it a necessity for a minister to have a private airplane? Why would they need a a private jet? Okay. Number one, that's something that sends a red flag up to me because why do you feel you need this? And when you have a minister that's on television and he's showing you 15 cars, luxury cars, hundred thousand, two hundred thousand dollar cars lined up in his driveway of his mansion and his, his members are living paycheck to paycheck. Some of them. And can barely afford to eat, but this is what he's showing. And then he's talking about not only that mansion, two or three others he has in different states and how he travels the world and takes trips with his family or his wife. Okay. And then his minister, his members are suffering. That's what I'm trying to get an understanding about. And it hasn't been just one minister at one mega church. And I'm not mentioning any names. I'm talking about quite a few of them with with things like that and you I've watched interviews with their members to where the some of the members that used to attend these churches no longer attend because it seems like it's just a money thing and I can recall watching one interview with one of the ministers that said well when you get paid you should pay anything First, don't pay anything, but pay your tithes first. Okay, let me tell you why I have a problem with that. God didn't say when you had to pay your 10%. He, you know, he didn't say it had to be before you paid your rent, before you paid your car note, your utilities and brought food for your, your children to eat and yourself. Okay, it took or, you know, or before you had to get your medicine for your health. But this minister also went on to say, if you don't do it that way, if you don't give the church first, if they're not the first person to get a cut out of that money, then God isn't going to bless you. Who are you to say who God is going to bless? 
you know, and that right there threw me that day. I said, oh, I, <laughs> I, I can't with these people. Because matter of fact, if you want to give 10% of something, you can give your time. You can give your time. Okay. If you want to do something, you can give your time. If you can't afford to give the money, then give the time. Help the homeless. Go out and, and mentor boys or girls that that is in need of something like that. But when someone tells you, okay, I don't care, basically, in other words, if you're homeless, hungry, or without your medicine, without an automobile to get you to A to Z to get to work, then you're not going to be blessed. I have a problem with that. And that's why I believe that so many people today has started to move away from religion because of all of these mega churches. They're not like they used to be. Back then in the day, they cared about their members. People love their 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 ministers. Their the first lady of the church. They love them. Okay? It was like one big family. But now it's like it's what you can give them. If you can't give, then keep it moving. They don't have anything for you. And then when you see these ministers, these same ministers in these movies playing in these movies and come on now, there should be a line that you draw. Okay? A line should be drawn. Okay, and I just believe that this is why the world is so full of hell right now, because people aren't believing they're losing faith because of all of these people that's in these mega churches that's telling them, okay, you're not going to be blessed. You're not giving as much as you, you we want you to give. You're not giving us every dime that you have and leaving yourself without any way to take care of yourself. That's a problem. So, no, I don't believe that any minister out there needs a private jet. OK, if he has to fly, fly like everyone else. All right. You don't need all that. And why do you need this mansion? Why do you need to flash all of your cars in your members faces showing them this is what I got? And then I want what you have. OK, I want the money that you have as well. That's crazy. OK, I believe I've always been a firm believer of of being who you are, you know, donating what you can. If you have it, donate it. If you don't, don't beat yourself up over it. If you don't have it come as you are. So you don't mean you don't have to have diamonds and 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 gold from head to toe to enter into these churches because if if you have to come in there looking like that then God's not in there you shouldn't want to be in there anyway so that's the problem I'm having with everything that's going on you know and I it's just it's unreal to me it is so unreal to me because I'm not used to it I'm used to having that personal relationship with my minister Okay, and and you don't have that in mega churches, and I don't care if I had five hundred, if I had five hundred million dollars. Okay, if I was a billionaire somewhere, and I had that money in the bank, I would not attend a mega church. Okay, I wouldn't. I would find me a small church. OK, a small church where you can get to know your minister and they can get to know you where your kids. My kids grew up in church, the same church that I grew up in. OK, that's what I like. That's what the type of thing I appreciate. I don't I just don't like that feeling of when they say mega church because they don't know anything about you. They don't. And it's not about you as a member. It's about them. It's about how good that church looks. It's about how they represent for that church. Hey, whose church is the biggest? Who's who's looked the best? And I don't I don't get into that. I, I would never attend a mega church, but I'm telling I'm not saying you shouldn't. I'm saying it's it's up to you. That's something you have to deal with in your life. Would you wanna would you really Desire to go to one of those type of churches. Because I, I, for one, wouldn't. You know, that's just not my cup of tea. I've always been into religion. I've always, I've grew up that way. 
but I am not a fan of mega churches at all. And I believe that because of the ways and because of everything that people are seeing and because what I've talked about, how they're saying you should give them first before you even take care of home and your family, your children. I I believe that I cannot back a church like that. Okay, I can't. And I am a God fearing person. So, you know, again, I will always be a part of church. But I cannot bring myself to believe in anything that's coming from a mega church because, again, it's about money, how much money you have, what can you give. And that's not the way I was brought up. That's not the way church should be. That's not the way it was explained to me when we were younger and Bible study, Bible school. Nothing, none of this makes sense to me. Okay, and people have they've lost faith. They feel that religion to some people is a joke because of all of this. And they no longer have faith. And it's sad because I think because we have so little faith in this world is why the world is in an uproar right now. Nothing good is going on in the world. There's so much racism and so much hatred. There's so many homeless out there. People not being able to eat. And, and, and these churches... What are they doing to help this? Are they reaching out to people? What are they doing? Because all I see is how they reach out and tell you how rich they are and everything that they have and, you know, and what you're supposed to be given. What are they giving to the people? What exactly are they giving to the people? What are they, are they saying anything that helps the people? No, they're not. And that's why I say I I did this segment on mega churches because of this. I just I can't believe in those. I can't believe that God is in those churches because of the way that they're handled. I know there's going to be some people that listen to this segment and, and not like it, but I don't care. Because one thing I always said and I will continue to say is my segments are I'm going to speak the truth. And if someone out there does not like my truth and what I feel about what I'm talking about, my opinion, then you don't have to listen. Okay, you really don't have to listen. I'm not trying to disrespect anyone. I just want to be honest about how I feel about the mega church. And I know sometimes when people disagree with what you have to say, they get angry. They feel that you're you're condemning something. I'm not condemning anything or anyone. I'm just saying I don't believe in churches like that. I believe in the smaller churches. Hello and welcome back to Life As It Is with me, Dora Middleton. Um, before my break, I was talking about the type of the type of church I don't believe in, and which is the mega churches. And I've given more than enough reasons to why I don't believe in them. And again, I'm not knocking them each to his own. Whomever he or she is out there that that's a part of a mega church or a desire to be a part of a mega church, that's your business. I'm not trying to pull you from it or steer you any kind of way. All I'm saying is what I don't like about those type of churches and why I would never be a part of any of those type of churches because I'm used to the close relationship that I grew up in with my minister and my family in church. You know, I, that's what I loved about church. You know, everyone was filled with this, the Holy spirit. Everyone could shout and, and you know, it, I like that. You don't get that in those churches. I love that music. You know, I, that I love the gospel music in the church and you don't get that in those mega churches. You know, the way it doesn't make you feel the way it would make you feel in those smaller churches. And like I said, I'm going by my experience, okay, of going into these big churches, really big ones, okay, with thousands of members. I didn't, it was just, I didn't feel like. That was my church home. I didn't feel comfortable. 
you know, and, and I love church. Like I said, I grew up in church. My kids are growing up in church. Even my adult children, you know, we love church. I love to hear the minister, the sermons, you know, but it just seems like every time I go to a bigger church like that, the, the sermons are about what they bought, what they might have bought, their wives might have bought, how they just bought this big luxury car and how this is how God blessed them. That's why they have so many cars and so many houses because they are obedient. They give the church the money before you do anything else with it. And that's the same line that they all use. They go, their paycheck, when it's cashed, it goes straight to the church. Listen to me, and I'm being a single mom. When I cash my paycheck, I'm paying my rent, my mortgage, my bills, my car notes, my utilities. I'm buying food for my children. I'm going to get what I need from my household, okay? Because I'm still going to give what I need to give to the church. But I'm going to take care of me, okay, and my family. Because there's no guarantee out there that if you give all your money away to these big ministers that's that's demanding that it's done that way are they gonna pay your rent your mortgage your utilities pay for your medicine no they're not they're gonna tell you most of them that they don't have it the church doesn't have it okay so you're gonna be left out you're gonna be left out in the cold you're gonna be homeless your kids are not gonna have a place to lay their heads and I'm not for that. So I'm going to, I, my, my relationship with God is good. Okay. And God knows where my heart is. He knows I give. He knows that, that I'm obedient, but I cannot be a part of the way that they teach things in those churches. Okay. You should make sure that your members are are okay, that that they have a roof over their head and a, a hot meal on the table for them and their children. But it seems to me like the church just wants that money when they collect, send that collection plate around five or six times a day, every Sunday. Every Sunday, it's it's just repeating about six times. It's coming back around. And don't get me wrong, I, I'll, I'll still stick money in there, at, plus my regular ties. OK, when I've gone to churches like that, but I just cannot get off into that. I will speak to anyone about religion and I will tell people I love the Lord. I am a child of God. I don't mind giving. I don't mind helping anyone. If anyone ever tells me they need help, if I have it to give, I give. OK, if I see a person holding up a sign on the street, I give. I don't care what they're going to do with it because I know I'm giving it out the kindness of my heart. Okay. And that's how I am. But I just, I can't, I I really believe that people are giving up on religion because of what they're seeing, what they're seeing on television, how these ministers are making things look like it's all a money thing. Like nothing else matters, but how much money they can bring into that church or what high end item they can purchase while the members, some of them are struggling to feed their families, to buy their kids medicine, their medicine, to keep their lights on and keep the cars running so that they can get to that job where they're living paycheck to paycheck. That's what you see. And that's what I don't like. There is no, absolutely no reason to why you should be going to a place that's demanding you to do all that first, rather than take care of yourself, home and your children. Because God did not, he didn't strictly say that I don't want your time. I just want your money. No, you give. And if you have to give in your time, then give that, that, that. And if you don't have that 10% and money to give, then give your time, give your time, help someone. Like I said, go, go and help feed the homeless. Go help clean up your neighborhood or whatever you might need to do in your neighborhood. I mean, just do something. Go help children that that has no one. You know what I'm saying? You can do that that way. Why does it have to be 
that if they don't give you money, then you won't be blessed. God didn't tell them they won't be blessed. God talks. He speaks to all of us. And when did he come and tell you to go tell his people that they won't be blessed? When did this conversation happen between you and all of your mega churches to where he told you to tell his people that they won't be blessed? That's not how it works. Okay. God knows the heart of his people. He knows. He knows their struggles. He knows what they're going through. And I dare you all tell people that. Okay. It's not right. It's not right. If if you were really a child of God the way you should be, if you're seeing somebody struggling, how about you sell one of your cars and just go through and feed the homeless? Help the single moms out there that might be needing help. Go give to a charity where maybe you, you can help them get clean drinking water somewhere. Take one of those, those very expensive automobiles that you brag so much about or sell off one of those houses and take all the proceeds from the sale of that house and just give it to different charities. Give it to different people that you know need it. When you all start doing that, that, that have the big mega churches, then I'll look at you differently. Then I'm going to say, oh, they actually do care. But until you do that, do not tell people that they won't be blessed. Because every time I hear that, every time I sit down and watch an interview with a big minister like that, when they say that, I get so angry. Because I'm like, only God knows who's going to be blessed. When, what, or how they will be blessed and what he will bless them with. Not any of you. Okay. And I am going to continue to talk. I talk to everyone about church and how much I love the Lord and how much I love church. And I'm never going to stop talking about church. Okay. Gospel, the Lord, my God up above. Okay. Because that's how I was raised. And I know I love my God. And I tell you, No matter what happens in my life, God is always there, always there on time. He shows up and shows out for me and my family. And I, I, that comes from experience. I know he's always there for us. And I never miss a day thinking my God up above. I can be driving in the car and I'm thinking I'm singing praises to my God up above about what he's done for me and my family and what he's going to do for me and my family because I know that he's always been there for me and my family. So I will never let anyone tell me anything differently when it comes to God, religion, whatever it may be because I know where my heart is and I know where I stand with my God. And I know it's not all about how much money you can put into the church. I know that that it's not about that. And I just wish that more people would be open to talk to people and let them know it's not about that. Don't beat yourself up if you don't have it to give. Just give your time. Help someone else. Speak to someone. Someone might need to have their spirits lifted just by some words that you're you're telling them. So, something you're talking to them about. Letting them know that, that they are loved by God. That might put a smile on some. That will definitely put a smile on someone's face. Let them know that they're not out here alone. Let them know that you will say a prayer for them every night. That, that, that they are blessed. That God protects them. From all hurt, harm, and danger. That's what we all need to do. If we all started doing this in the world today, the world wouldn't be the way it is right now. So full of hatred and anger. People killing. It's so many kids missing right now. It's ridiculous. People killing each other. For getting over in front of another car. Okay, you're driving the way you should be driving. You're using your signal and you're getting over. And this person is so angry. 
And Satan is running so rapid out there that they may pull out a gun and shoot through your car. We need for people to speak about the Lord. We need for these churches to do more than what they are doing. Okay? Stop letting politicians come to your church and use your members as a way to try to get you to vote a certain way. Stop it. Okay? That's not right. It's not right at all. And you know that your members are going to follow you because guess what? You're their minister. They feel they should follow you because you're not going to steer them the wrong way. You're not going to you're not going to have them do something that they're not supposed to. At least that's what they're thinking. But I don't think you should be out here mixing politics with religion, with church. You shouldn't be out here doing that. Let people make their own decisions. Don't as a preacher, don't allow these politicians to step into your church and tell you to have your members vote a certain way. Let these people vote the way their heart has them to vote. Don't vote because of race. Don't vote because this person and that person says, well, they're going to do this and they're going to, you know, uh, they, it would be pretty good if they, if you vote this way, because then this law can be passed or this and that. And then stop it. Okay. Let people vote the way they need to vote. Find, look into their own heart and, and vote for the person that they think is best for the job or for the situation they, that they think will help them and the other people that needs to be helped. But it's so much. I, it's so many people out here using religion and people within the church for their own selfish reasons is sickening. Okay. It's really sickening and people, we need to get it together. This is why it's so many fires. There's so many floods and so much hell and so much havoc because God is not happy. He is not happy because of all this nonsense that's going on in the world today. And until you all out there, everyone figures out what they are doing wrong, it's only going to get worse. It's not going to get better. Nothing is going to get better. And so people find their truth and understand where they're going wrong and want to make a change. And like I said, until you understand that what you what's happening out there is wrong. You won't ever be able to straighten it out because you're not going to be a part of trying to straighten it out because you don't believe there's anything wrong. You can't be a part of the solution because you don't feel there's anything wrong that's happening out there. Okay. So again, as I stated before, I know that I've probably hit someone's nerves out there that's going to listen to this segment. And and that's good. I say it's good because it'll make you talk about the things that need to talk that need to be talked about. OK, I'm not going to apologize about anything I've said in this segment because this is what I feel. These are the things that I have seen firsthand. And I'm not going to apologize for it. So either you like it or you don't. OK. These segments that I have on my podcast are to speak about the truth. I'm not here to candy coat anything. I'm not here to tiptoe on eggshells to make someone feel better, you know, because they don't want to hear what I'm saying. No, I'm not here for that. I'm here to give you the straight truth, whether you like it or not. That's why I call my segment Life As It Is, okay? So I would like to thank you all for joining me in this segment of Life As It Is with me, Dora Middleton. And again, feel free to leave me an email or a message. You know, you can reach out to me if there's something that you want to talk about that I haven't talked about yet. Feel free because I will get back with you. And again, I read all of the emails that I get. Okay, and there is no subject that I won't talk about. So feel free to reach out to me. Okay, but until next time, again, thank you for joining me, Dora Middleton, in Life As It Is. Take care.